All right, so welcome to all of you. Um, we are, uh, well, I am Lucilla Grossi and I'm a spatial designer and I am a collaborator of Institution Under Construction, which is the platform that today organized this talk about um, virtual spaces between realism and abstraction. So uh, we have here an amazing team of researchers and artists that deal with um, medias and digital art mostly. Um, and uh, we will have the chance to present them later in, in a few minutes. So here with us, there is um, the director of uh, institution, so Fabio Cavallucci, and there's also the president, Hu Hui Ming, uh, that will follow the talk with us. Um, Institution Under Construction is a, a new platform uh, dealing with the, the contemporary arts. So it's a multidisciplinary world that aims to create a new way and a contemporary and a future maybe way of uh, exploring um, in a multidisciplinary point of view of the arts. Mm, so not only visual art, but sound art and all the other intersection that the contemporary world um, oblige us also to follow. And it will develop uh, in a physical way and also on a digital platform. So since we are now developing our digital platform, and um, we decided to organize some talks and as open discussion with uh, some professionals of the field and to um, try to answer all together to some questions that were reasoned during our own internal brainstorming meetings and our practical work on the spaces. We have connected also um, the architects that are following the project uh, and from the Clouds AO studio, so Ostev and Masayuki. And um, uh, so, yes, we can, we can actually open the conversation that will be moderated by Professor Guerrini, Luca Guerrini from Politecnico di Milano, who's an associated professor um, of Politecnico and uh, uh, whose uh, field of research is um, the and like the, the starting and ending point between design and the art. So that's the perfect figure to, uh, you know, combine the world of uh, sp virtual spaces. And so the project from a design and architectural point of view, and also the world of contemporary arts, that is our main field of um, intervention. So Professor Guidini, I'll leave you the stage. Thank you, Lucilla, for your introduction. So, um, well, the main reason why I'm here is because uh, trying to find a link between design and the arts. Um, I started working precisely with Lucilla, and I was the supervisor of uh, her thesis on the metaverse. And we also wrote a couple of essays on the topic and the new world. Uh, undertaking this research, and uh, so we 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 would like to know more. Uh, we 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 totally unexperienced, um, at least before Latilla studies. So the people who are here, um, who will help us understanding what we are really talking about, when we we talk about the relationship between the metaverse and the arts are uh, uh, Martin Romeo, who is an uh, Italo-Argentinian visual artist um, who explores the relationship between nature, technology, and the body. I'm uh, 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 translating from the Italian. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he graduated in the same university I graduated, so the university, the uh, Architecture um, Institute of Venice, he graduated in visual art. Uh, he was uh, uh, ex exhibiting in several uh, important exhibitions, such as the uh, Venice Biennale in Hong Kong. And also he was um, 
uh, granted by the Italian Council of the Ministry uh, of the Italian Ministry of Culture. He exhibited also um, in the Uffizi Gallery and uh, in the um, European Parliament. He is currently also a teacher. He teaches, he is the coordinator of the Master of Visual Arts at um, IED in Milan and also is teaching at, at NABA, the new Academy of uh, Fine Arts in Milan. So uh, <clears throat> we also have here uh, Christopher Michael, who is an uh, artist, writer, and researcher um, dedicated to the integration of AI technologies into its uh, creative um, output. He works since uh, 2020 and uh, he uh, graduated uh, in uh, um, visual media anthropology at um, Buffalo University and is currently uh, <clears throat> a doctoral student in the same university. And finally, we have uh, my friend, uh, Domenico Quaranta, who is teaching at, at Brera, at the, the glorious uh, Academy of Fine Arts in Brera. Um, um, he is particularly interested in digital art. And one of the reasons why I, I, I know him is because of his books on NFTs and in general on, on these topics. And also he is art curator and uh, um, an expert uh, in, in, in the subject. So um, here we are. I, I, I think we, we should give the word to, to our friends, the uh, New York architects, don't we? Lucilla? Or are they? No, at the end, afterwards? we can we can start with Martin or Christopher. Uh, are, they, are they talking at the end? OK, yeah. wonderful. So <clears throat> one of the reasons why we were delving into the metaverse was that uh, we found out a, a very strange kind of space. Mm -hmm. On the on on the one side, it looked like a uh, oh, mimicking, mirroring reality, and on the other, uh, exploring completely different kind of uh, of um, sp spatial experiences. Um, I, I must say that I'm not the right person to moderate this <clears throat> conversation because I think that to understand the, the you know the, the the typical metaverse experience, you should have grown inside the the these experiences. Especially, you should have been a a, a video uh, game player. Um, because without that kind of experience, you, you, you lose uh, one of the reasons why uh, we look at this space in this way. Um, but I'm quite old, you know, I'm, I'm one of the, I, I, I enter the computer age, you know, digiting on, on, the, on the keyboard of, of a Commodore C64 in the early 1980s. And, uh, at that time, I used I, I used to play. It was a wonderful, it was a wonderful machine. Uh, but then, you know, uh, I lost a confidence with all these new uh, practices. So I think uh, um, for sure, uh, you, uh, Martin and Christopher, should uh, help us understanding. Uh, uh, the reason why we look at these spaces and we see these things uh, in the metaverse and the kind of experience that you are producing in these places. So uh, as, as we decided, I, I give the word to Martin uh, first and after Christopher. Okay, can, can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. 
Um, yes, thank we do. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you for the warm welcome and for organizing this event. So I'm super glad to be uh, part of it. Um, yeah, I am visual artist, like you said, and I do different um, artworks in terms of uh, tangible, how I like to call them. So are physical uh, objects, physical installation that are interactive with the users in different levels or in physical with a viewer in the space or the data uh, remotely connected or with the nature or the ecosystem around the installation. So this is one of the things that I do. It's better to have a look at them maybe on my Instagram uh, profile. You can see and discover all them projects. And what I will talk today is more my uh, multimedia um, production that is immersive, that is it's a virtual reality and for sure is online because we are talking about the metaverse, uh, I mean, from my side. So for, for the last years, uh, we can go on to the next uh, page. Thank you. For the last years, I started to, to work and collaborate with different uh, brands and companies uh, in the intent to uh, have more approach and focus in the potentiality of the metaverse itself. Uh, for their ecosystem, for their business, and for to find new clients for these uh, brands and companies. But at the same time, how you said, I, I won this grant from Italian Council, from the ministry, and helped me to uh, put more attention and spend more time for the research that was uh, really important, to pass more, many time, uh, more time that I can in these platforms, and um, to understand the mechanism, to understand the community, to understand how the, uh, the body um, works in these um, new dimensions. And during this, uh, these years, I met this new magazine that some pictures in the presentation are from, from them. Uh, I did more than 40 spaces, and this is Red Eye Magazine. Uh, Red Eye Magazine is a new in terms of um, have a space, a three-dimensional three space to explode to expand, uh, extend um, the contents. Um, they are like a yeah, magazine, but talk about fashion, digital cultures, and the content and informations are in 2D, are in uh, experience mode. Uh, they um, propose this kind of um, new narration, new storytelling, to be more engaged in what the content tells itself. So here is special, the, one of the metaverses that I, I uh, decide to invest um, my um, design, my uh, approach to this three-dimensional world. Because um, one word that I like from special is the accessible on the platform. You can enter with the headset, you can enter with, with the different devices. Uh, and then there is other reasons about aesthetic and quality. But the, the first is that one that I said. Um, during uh, this all the, all the time, I, um, I, I, I saw the metaverse sees because I'm more than one for sure, um, disorienting. So it was uh, disruptive in contrast um, with the technology, how it's going, that is more uh, the, the evolution of technology related to, to, net, to be nature in the, the approach with the interface and to make the, all the stuff, all the uh, technical part of the process more hybrid, right? Like now is uh, there is the uh, mixed reality. So um, during that that time, we can go to the next uh, the next page. Um, I did some artworks for um, for the theater with the scenography. So it was digital scenography using AI technology, and um, I win in uh, an artistic residency for a performing arts that was online. The, the, the results. So I, co I combined, I, I um, decided to uh, put all these gaps, let's say, uh, together, and um, I, I built this Humanverse project that is a performance, is for sure is uh, the result of a big, uh, long journey. But it's a performance where there is an actor, and there is this guide that help the group of visitors uh, to, you know, to be introduced, to join, um, the, the, the travel to the experiment all together and also this um, guide help them in different ways in different levels uh, for sure about the topic of the environment but also in technical way 
supporting them for the movement they do. And uh, the guide is essential because active, the different triggers that are hidden in the space. So um, without the guide that is um, like a non-player character or is a human behind this guide. I mean, it's something that I like to be, to, to leave there really uh, not clear, okay? Um, because um, I want to give some kind of identity to this guide. So this guy is essential, essential, um, and allowed to to play in the narration. Without the guy, nothing happened. You are in the first room, just uh, the blue walls, and that is. So the another thing is about the participants. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Slide, thank you. Uh, about the participants, because um, they have to find new ways of communication. They have to find new uh, signs, uh, body language. Uh, self-definition of the identity because with this kind of architecture that I try to um, fold the, the architecture uh, of a special in performance that is something atypical I try to um, do that but at the same time I have to follow the, the rules so uh, in the virtual reality in the physical way how I can experience this performance this is the documentation from the from the browser so the um, computer view um, I have to, let's say, um, discover my, myself because I see just my, my hands with a VR mode. And I ask to the others avatar who I am. At the same time, I try to identify them because when uh, we enter in the uh, physical version, uh, we met, we, we see each other. But after we, we um, change our aspect, we, uh, we are something else. We are... Um, avatars at the end, digital twins. So in that sense, it's really interesting how also here the levels are different about how, how I can communicate with others, uh, with the boys in the physical place. I just talk and try to understand where, where they are or how I am or who I am. And uh, also, yes, I try to jump. I try to move my hands in the space to, um, yeah, to take the attention from the others and try to create some relationship, kind of relationship. So um, the avatars uh, faces challenges without a score, without a competition and race. So it's more about the final goal of this experiment and performance to be uh, more, to, uh, to get more uh, awareness about what I can do and not in the digital dimension. And to be ready, let's say, to um, create my own uh, words and my on ways in this um, online situation and dimensions. So, so um, the another level that's really interesting is when the uh, avatar and the human match uh, be, um, becomes stronger in some part of the of the show that are you uh, looking right now, and um, what happened there is. I can I can perceive the effect of the avatar through my body. I can just read some lines and give you this this, uh, this effect that is the avatar start to jump in the part of the of the show that uh, is in, the, in that video more than usual. And the gravity sense, or better called the power of digitalization, however I said, goes back to the human passing through the organs from inside, creating a bridge of relationship. A feeling of power, of contact, a question comes up. I can die, for instance, another one. The avatar is over the top of the tower. The sense of vertigo is strong. I move, I rotate on the spot to facilitate the ascent of my digital self. We are synchronized, we are aligned. So we can go to the, to the next, thank you. So the guide uh, shows and allows uh, to start the various scenes, how we said, and this entity uh, here we cannot see because it's at home, right? How we said, and in here we can see some uh, reaction from the, the storyline, storytelling, where the five person that uh, meet in this um, performance try to create contact 
being being in distance, in the same place, but they meet again in somewhere somewhere else. Um, we can go for the next slide. Thank you. And before to play to play, before wait a moment, please. I want just to say one thing, something more. Um, because it's about uh, this video, that is a video, it's not the documentation of the performance how it was before. This video I made uh, with uh, Espronet, is a company that work in uh, uh, digital, digital transformation. And with them, I try to teach to the uh, employees uh, these tools that uh, we saw with uh, the last uh, video, with the previous one, uh, in, the, in the idea to implement the um, scenario and to uh, leave them um, with, a, with some possibilities to interact with the, the, the digital dimension. So they did uh, all what we are uh, going to watch. And what I did was just to uh, combine all the elements together to be more clear in the narration. And the topic that was uh, inside of the narration was uh, the talent blossom uh, in relationship with the machine and the human. So we can play right now and... In the maze of fate, talents lay concealed. Uncovering them is a journey rare, where soul's truths are revealed. In the airy mist of creativity, dances of skill and genius bright, talents shimmer like stars in the darkest night, a mystery's light. With the might of old myths, we explore our inner depths, where talent sets itself free and unfolds like an intricate artwork. Beneath the rainbow's hue, where learning's tapestry unfurls, bold ideas and visions true, as passion guides and wisdom swirls, we craft our fate with hearts aglow, no reservations, just dreams to sow. You can stop. And uh, yeah, that is. Uh, thank you. And maybe later we can talk about it. Okay. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. Mm, I have questions, but uh, we, we leave them for, for the end. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Um, so next will be uh, Christopher. Are you there, Christopher? Hi, Christopher. Um, um, <clears throat> I think you understood that I'm not an expert. I know that you're not very fond of experts because I wrote, I, I, I read a, a, a paper from you, the, is something with foolish. And, and uh, so cool, yeah. I, I enjoy, I enjoyed it a lot. You know, the, you. you know, my, my means of understanding are very traditional. I have to read things. Uh, rather than experience metaverses. Um, so, um, but anyway, I, I was also fascinated by by that video about the truck simulator. Uh, uh, it's a, it is uh, defined as a, um, a kind of hypnosis, and it's totally true. I mean, at the end of the video, you're, you are completely hypnotized so it it, it works it's function <laughs> that, that's good to hear that it, yeah so that, that i was give you cool. the word tell us 
Um, thank you so much. Tell yeah. us your experience. Yeah, um, Lucilla, um, will I have, uh, okay, perfect. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, that's uh, very kind of you. Uh, and I'm happy that you enjoyed um, uh, Transcendental Simulator, um, which, uh, yeah, was, was sort of um, about exploring uh, different metaverse spaces. So that was about exploring the truck simulator spaces. And um, I'm particularly interested in my personal artwork in the spiritual applications for virtual worlds or how virtual worlds can be used um, in ways other than the sort of like official, um, the, the official design, I guess. Um, today, I'll be talking a little bit more about um, a program that I'm a part of um, called Six Minutes Past Nine. Um, so this is um, a program uh, or like a organization that I've been a part of for about two years now. Um, and it was started by uh, Dan Ellingham, um, who is in, uh, uh, who is watching this somewhere. Uh, <laughs> he would just uh, texted me on WhatsApp. Um, but uh, I'm gonna be talking about our approach to um, art and virtuality. So I've been kind of bringing my own expertise into this space. Um, so uh, the kind of idea behind um, six minutes past nine um, has been uh, to uh, help contemporary artists or help people, um, you know, working in different cultural spaces um, to approach virtuality in new ways. Um, we saw that there was sort of um, little resources for media artists who wanted to work within virtual worlds or little resources that were um, particularly exciting uh, or tools that were exciting um, for media artists who um, wanted to sort of create digital exhibitions. Um, and we uh, thought, you know, we want to give people the space um, to sort of be able to experiment um, with different virtual worlds and to really think critically about um, how we show our art within um, these virtual landscapes. So like Martin's um, sort of uh, metaverse spaces there, we wanted to give people the opportunity um, to really think through um, how to create these spaces in new ways and in ways that felt uh, natural because oftentimes um, the, the metaverse um, and sort of metaverse spaces um, can feel uh, unnatural or um, not sort of intuitive for artists. So how do we create an experience that is intuitive for artists? So um, I got involved with Six Minutes um, because I did a sort of pilot residency program um, with them, uh, which you'll see work from in a little bit. Um, and I did that, uh, I believe, two years ago. Um, and so that's where I met Dan. That's how I got introduced to Six Minutes. Um, I did a residency program that was, uh, I believe, three months long, and um, it was about uh, building um, space in New Art City, which is a tool that we still use, um, and sort of uh, uh, incorporating my own artwork into this New Art City space. Um, over the course of that first residency, you know, I met, um, uh, maybe you all know, um, uh, or uh, Lucilla, you know, um, Sonia. Um, so uh, I met um, other artists who were sort of also figuring out how to incorporate their work into these virtual spaces. And um, I actually, um, funny that you mentioned the truck simulator video because um, the project of my first virtual space was um, to actually take a lot of the footage from a uh, truck simulator and repurpose it for um, this sort of uh, metaverse space. So, um, so I began um, with six minutes then, and I just thought, um, the Dan's approach in particular um, to new media and virtual space um, was really uh, interesting and it felt like he was really onto something. Um, and when it finished, he said, um, you know, I would like to expand this program. Um, I would like to like open it up to, um, to, to focus it on more of like an alternative um, arts education slash intensive program. Um, and I said, awesome, let's do it. Um, and so over the past two or so years, we've been developing um, a program which is now underway and we're actually about to be in our final week. Um, but uh, actually, uh, yeah, Lucilla, could I go to the next slide? Thank you. Um, so uh, we kind of had meetings initially where we were just thinking through um, what would be of use to artists now, right? Like what are the sort of concerns that contemporary artists have when it comes to working um, in virtual spaces. Um, and we uh, 
ended up kind of settling on, um, you know, conversations about life and hybrid reality, right? So um, we're living in a time when um, virtual worlds, uh, you know, virtual spaces are, are just as important as physical spaces. Um, and these two things have to have a relationship to one another. And you can't necessarily just have a virtual world on its own, um, you know, in the same way that, you know, especially in contemporary art spaces now, it's hard to have just the physical gallery space. You, you still have to have digital documentation or virtual documentation. So um, we got really interested in this idea of hybrid reality, um, right? And about how now that there's more access to virtual tools and people are, you know, more familiar with things like Blender or Unity um, or, uh, you know, just working more digitally in general or um, sort of even, you know, uh, playing video games and getting involved with like video game communities or something like how now that we have that access, how do we use it to our advantage um, as artists um, and especially within um, the contemporary uh, art space? So um, we started to develop uh, what we call the virtual studio program, um, which is, again, ongoing right now. Um, that would introduce artists who might not have necessarily um, Blender experience or um, Unity experience or, um, you know, kind of more traditional um, 3D modeling um, backgrounds. Uh, we wanted to give them tools that would allow um, allow them to sort of create uh, virtual worlds and, and um, these different sort of digital gallery spaces. So. Um, like in the original residency, we started working with this group, New Art City, um, who have created, uh, it's actually very similar to Spatial.io, uh, um, which we saw before, but it's a, a, a virtual gallery space where you can um, sort of bring, uh, uh, you know, uh, JPEGs to life or videos to life uh, within a 3D gallery space, um, and you can experiment with it. And so we wanted to build this program that was uh you know over the course of seven or nine weeks we would um sort of allow people to use these tools but also to think critically about these tools right about how they're showing their work um within this these virtual spaces and you know metaverses um if i could go to the next slide that would be awesome cool thank you um so yeah so right now um Luchilla is actually a part of this program um it's our uh pilot intensive program um that currently features 12 artists um from all over um so we have i think we have three continents represented we have europe america um and uh south america um because we have a student uh in argentina whose work is actually on the far left uh the kind of sparse uh bubble there um so uh over the course of um these past few weeks we're on week six now um we've all been working together we've been meeting on discord um twice a week um first to have discussions about um you know what is virtual space why is it important to our practice what are the issues that we run into with it um what are the things that could be better um so we have discussions but we also have um you know uh crits and workshops um, where, uh, you know, people who are developing their, their work through New Art City, um, like some of these examples you see at the bottom, um, can show um, their work to um, their peers, but also, um, but also to um, like visiting artists um, and uh, get some feedback on, you know, on ways um, that they're building these spaces. So one of the big things for us has been um, to offer sort of virtual uh, uh crit sessions um and to uh you know make sure that that was different than what was going on in a typical art school uh crit session right that we were um focusing on the actual virtual aspects of their work um and something kind of unique about our program of course is that it all takes place on discord so it's all virtual anyways um so even the ways that we communicate with each other and share links and share our knowledge um happens in a very non-traditional um setting um so we wanted on all fronts to kind of be challenging um traditional models and we wanted on all fronts to be um kind of uh, uh incorporating this hybrid reality model um we've also had some really amazing guests um from uh there's a group called soot that's like a new file image or organization system we have the ceo of soot comes talk to us um, we had the editors of clot just speak yesterday um it's a, a wonderful magazine um, that focuses on new media, art, and technology that I write for. Um, 
and we have some other guests lined up uh, that I'm forgetting his name and I feel bad about that. Uh, but um, anyways, uh, yeah, we, uh, we've just been sort of uh, trying to share our knowledge of virtual spaces um, and open it up to a discussion between artists just to see what we can do um, when we all put our heads together. So um, you'll see here at the bottom, there's three examples. The one on your far left, if you're looking at the screen, uh, is actually my space that I created during a residency, which was called Hypnagogic Highways. Um, and it was about um, this, uh, Luca, you were kind of mentioning um, this sort of like hypnotic uh, uh, feeling that you get um, within the truck simulator games, um, but also kind of expanding that to this feeling of hypnosis within virtual worlds. So that was my work that I created two years ago. Uh, in the middle um, is work by a uh, German artist based in the UK, Adonia uh, Boucheri, um, who's uh, uh, sort of incorporating these, uh, a lot of literary references uh, into her work in this space. Um, this picture, it's great, it's fantastic, but it doesn't do her whole space justice either um, because she's um, taking this really interesting approach to the, um, the virtual space that's very inspired by um, more kind of traditional poetry um, and things like that. Um, and then on the end, uh, on the right, um, is uh, by an Argentinian artist uh, named uh, Danny Bruno. Um, this I'm realizing now that this picture does not look quite as good condensed as it does uh, in full screen. So I apologize for that. But um, he's uh, working with sound and music uh, and incorporating that into this space. Um, so uh, he's taking it, uh, taking this virtual space in the New Art City platform um, in a different direction where he's um, really interested in how uh, sound works um, within that space. Um, as are a few other artists um, in our cohort. Um, for me, it's been super um, rewarding to be a part of because I am somebody who in my own personal art practice um, is interested in new ways that we can use, you know, the metaverse and virtual worlds um, for uh, reasons that aren't like, or for design purposes that aren't necessarily like the official design purposes, right? So, um, you know, uh, like in my truck simulator work, I, you know, was interested in how people were using truck simulator to have um, sort of meditational experiences and transcendental experiences. So um, this is something that I like want to encourage. And I hope I, you know, I hope we are encouraging this within um, the space where um, artists are um, sort of figuring out different ways that they can use these tools. Um, and uh, Lucille, if you could go to the last slide. Um, we, I do want to just plug that um, we have our virtual exhibition opening um, next Thursday, I have to double check, um, where um, the sort of completed work from this pilot uh, program um, will be on view. Um, and it's going to be really exciting just to kind of see all the work um, that, uh, that, that our cohort has done. Um, and yeah, there's some uh, really incredible uses of new art of the new art city platform that are uh that are being utilized so um you know i have to plug um the exhibition that is next week um that that you should all check it out um and give us a follow on instagram at six minutes past nine um also i was informed that we are a cohort of 11 people not 12 so i do apologize for that uh as well um but yeah thank you thank you christopher Thank you very much. <clears throat> so, uh, um, as far as I understand, uh, we are totally immersed in a very experimental uh, situation in which, on the one hand, probably uh, Martin is, is developing specially, um, how can I say, uh, how to guide people to experience this uh, new virtual world, and I'm I'm talking about um, um, his uh, um, human verse, for example. This idea of involving other people and be being the person who guide all the other, who guides all the other inside the metaverse. So. The idea of familiarizing people to this new dimension in a collective 
way and on the other uh, the idea of testing the potential of the of, of the space um mm, which is always a a, a three-dimensional space this is one of the things that Tuchila and i were reflecting on uh, in the end, it seems that we cannot move out from that idea because we're humans. And also, when we experience a totally virtual world, we need to have this kind of uh, three-dimensional um, 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 perspective scheme. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Um, we can float but always floating inside a space that we can recognize as humans. I don't know whether I'm wrong or right, but anyway, maybe Domenico can help us understanding these things. Hello, do you hear me? Hello. Okay. Yes, we do. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I, I will start from uh, afar, but probably I will get uh, to very similar conclu conclusions uh, uh, to what Luca just uh, uh, said about the experience of the virtual, uh, uh, of the virtual world. Uh, I don't have anything to, to share with, uh, with you, but uh, visually, but uh, I will rely on uh, uh, very uh, well-known examples, so maybe you can just... Uh, 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 browse for uh, for them um, so uh, a few years ago between uh, 2006 and 2009 uh, i was very present and uh, active uh, in an older metaverse uh, which was called uh, and is called uh, still uh, today second life no i got into that uh, uh, at the time it was called the virtual world uh, I got into that place because many uh, artists from my former uh, community were getting some uh, uh, interest in this uh, space, so uh, I followed uh, them. And for uh, about three years, uh, I also ran uh, a blog, uh, some kind of uh, uh, diary uh, of the artistic experiences that uh, I made in the, in the metaverse. And uh, I have to say that at the time uh, I was uh, uh, really and strongly uh, against uh, realism uh, in uh, um, virtual worlds uh, for, for a, a number of, uh, of reasons. First, um, <clears throat> Mm, Second Life uh, was uh, uh, a place that actually uh, promised uh, uh, to uh, allow you to create, to generate any kind of reality. No? The slogan was uh, your world, your uh, imagination. You had the full uh, uh, access uh, uh, to the tools for uh, editing and changing, and building and shaping uh, the world around uh, uh, you. Uh, it was famously inspired by the burning uh, uh, man. No? So um, uh, it promised uh, to allow you an access uh, uh, to a very uh, out of order uh, reality. No? But at the same time, many people uh, were just uh, getting in that place and building houses for avatars, uh, cars uh, from moving from one place uh, to the other, um, replicas. Uh, of existing uh, uh, places, no? like uh, uh, Parioli was uh, uh, made uh, in second uh, in second life, no? um, and also artists. Uh, many uh, artists uh, are were using uh, or, or self pretending artists uh, were using uh, second life in a very. Um, uh, traditional uh, uh, way, no? They were building uh, uh, galleries uh, where they were placing videos uh, and uh, prints upon the uh, walls, uh, and they really didn't uh, feel uh, um, uh, the, the meaning of uh, uh, this, no? Why replicate the very limitation that you have in reality when you can uh, uh, play with the uh, codes? Uh, why? Uh, making an avatar that's uh, uh, very similar to your physical uh, uh, body when you can be something uh, totally different uh, from uh, what you are in real uh, life, no? Um, 
But of course, uh, uh, the, the, there were some uh, uh, things that were uh, affecting my judgment. Now, the first uh, thing uh, is that I was there uh, uh, mostly to look for art experiences and not for life uh, uh, experiences. I was not interested in having a romantic conversation with uh, uh, somebody at the Parioli. Otherwise, uh, I would probably have felt the need of a bench where to sit down with my uh, partner. No? Uh, or a beautiful uh, uh, muse museum uh, like a replica of the Louvre where to walk uh, uh, through uh, while uh, talking with somebody, uh, somebody else. No? Uh, and also uh, at the time uh, I was uh, uh, strongly influenced uh, by the uh, ethos uh, of the Web One, uh, where nobody uh, knows uh, you are a dog. No, uh, this uh, uh, idea of, of the night is that the internet was the, the place uh, where you can uh, uh, experiment uh, with uh, identity. Um, and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, build and shape your own uh, space no? into the uh, online uh, environment. Uh, so why being a Domenico Quaranta when I can be a corporation, when I can be a collective, where, when I can be uh, a group of people, uh, somebody uh, of another gender and so on uh, and so forth. Or, coming from another place in the world and so on and so forth uh, and the other thing that was strongly affecting me was probably the uh, ethos of early uh, net art no? so this uh, uh, idea uh, that uh, uh, the uh, internet that uh, uh, we are going to build has to be experimental uh, so you have to, to build uh, places uh, where people get uh, uh, lost, like uh, uh, jody.org, for example. Now you have, again, uh, to uh, play uh, with uh, code. You have to uh, demonstrate, uh, in a way, uh, another possible use of the internet, which is not uh, 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 just a vitrine for what you are doing uh, outside of, uh, of it. No? Um, and what probably I wasn't getting at the time was that uh, NetArt was uh, extraordinary because there was an ordinary reality around of, uh, of it, uh, plenty of uh, uh, welcome to my uh, homepage, uh, uh, birthday uh, websites, uh, uh, plenty of uh, uh, professor doctor web pages, no, very uh, old style, uh, made uh, with uh, 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 a white background, uh, uh, black text, uh, and blue uh, links uh, uh, in order to to work, no. Uh, and also that uh, um, I, I, I was not probably getting that uh, we were entering uh, another phase of the web, the phase in which. Uh, um, user-generated content was becoming uh, uh, predominant. No? And they started uh, understanding that uh, uh, Second Life and the virtual spaces in general could be interesting uh, also when they are uh, conventional. Uh, when I started uh, following uh, uh, John Raff, the, the, the way in which John Raffman was using uh, uh, Second Life, no? he uh, created this uh, cartoonish uh, uh, weird uh, avatar, which was called uh, uh, Kool-Eyed Man, and uh, uh, using his avatar was basically doing guided tours in Second Life. And it was not bringing people uh, to art experiences. Uh, it was bringing people to forests, uh, to uh, some places that were at the same time very uh, conventional. Uh, but also uh, quite uh, uh, weird, and the, where the expression of this uh, uh, collective unconscious that people were bringing into the um, the, the virtual world, no. 
Uh, so, um, by thinking about uh, uh, this, I didn't uh, uh, completely change my, uh, my mind, but also uh, experiences uh, uh, newer metaverses in recent uh, years. I'm still very uh, critical against artists uh, who are um, using uh, it uh, as it, if it were uh, uh, a place where to do a rendering of the exhibition they would like to do in the uh, brick and mortars uh, uh, world, but they can't. Uh, I always push my students that are making projects in uh, places like Spatial and so on uh, to go beyond that uh, model of uh, uh, reality, no? to try to experiment uh, uh, with the place uh, in, in a different way. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think that uh, um, any uh, metaverse uh, has to provide, uh, uh, not necessarily to be realistic, but to provide the, some, the consistency of uh, uh, reality, no? some level of uh, uh, normality in which uh, uh, somebody can feel uh, uh, comfortable, uh, some way to touch uh, uh, ground. No, to say uh, I'm not uh, in the real world anymore, this place is different, but at the same time I can uh, uh, reorient uh, uh, myself uh, quite, uh, uh, quite uh, easily. Um, uh, and they can feel uh, I'm in some kind of uh, uh, reality, no? uh, which again, mm, doesn't need to be uh, overly uh, realistic, uh, also because uh, along uh, uh, the years, uh, uh, people started uh, um, having experiences in very different kind of uh, uh, video games. They are uh, used to uh, change their uh, reality now, but uh, any of these uh, realities uh, has to create the conditions for us uh, uh, to get familiar with the space and to feel uh, uh, not uh, out of uh, uh, place no? in that uh, uh, environment. But of course, uh, if uh, the metaverse that you are shaping uh, is open for artistic uh, uh, pra practice, I think uh, it should provide uh, a night level of uh, uh, freedom and to allow artists to do just uh, whatever they uh, want. And uh, if they want to uh, uh, get uh, uh, abstract uh, to experiment uh, with, uh, uh, I don't know, the absence of gravity, the absence of uh, uh, the, the lack of uh, um, uh, un sorry, uh, the possibility to compenetrate uh, with other uh, bodies uh, uh, and things like that, they should uh, have the possibility to do uh, it, no? Uh, even if uh, uh, within a uh, um, comfortable uh, uh, setting. Um, one last uh, remark and then uh, um, I leave the stage to the to the conversation um, we also have to uh, think about one uh, thing um, uh, today for the most part uh, our experience of uh, uh, the virtual space is uh, still mediated by the desktop experience um, but uh, uh, on the long run and uh, already today, uh, another possibility to access this uh, uh, space uh, is the VR uh, experience. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, maybe complicates uh, uh, the things uh, uh, a little bit more uh, on, on the way to uh, realism, no? Because uh, uh, when you are um, wearing uh, uh, wear glasses uh, and so you uh, enter a simulated uh, uh, reality uh, in which uh, you feel uh, uh, somehow uh, immersed, it's really important uh, uh, to um, provide to the user at least uh, um, uh, some basic resemblance uh, to reality. Otherwise, uh, uh, spending uh, uh, a long time in such kind of uh, uh, place uh, should, um, could be uh, quite uh, uh, disorienting for, uh, uh, for, for the audience.
So um, my basic point is that maybe we don't have to be realistic uh, in the uh, metaverse. Hopefully it will become uh, a, a reality which is completely uh, different from uh, outer uh, reality. But uh, we should be, uh, how can I say, like uh, uh, realitarian, you know, uh, to uh, uh, make an effort to uh, provide some uh, stable ground in which uh, more experimental experiences can take shape. Mark Domenico. Um, now, now maybe, maybe we, we can start. Uh, I know we have uh, we have our um, newer friends at the end, don't they? Our architect friends, you mean? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, so we can welcome again. Um, Hello. Masayuki, uh, Sono, and Ostap. Hello. And Hi. Yeah. Thank you for being here. So, if you have any, you know, um, thoughts about the, because we we're working, I'll, I'll tell you to the public too. We have been working for a long time, and we are still working uh, in collaboration, of course, um, with the architects studio they they are partner of to create a VR world, so a world that is immersive, um, both in a VR system with a headset and also in a desktop system. And um, we, like, we faced a lot of uh, interesting thoughts about realism and abstractism. And it's interesting how uh, Luca pointed it out, the difference between um, the experimentation that there is in six minutes uh, residency in, in the art program and um, the more, uh, the, let's say, the tendency to um, help familiarizing that there is in the work of uh, Martin Romeo. And we have been balancing, we have tried to balance these two dimensions of, you know, experimenting and um, creating an, uh, an, a comfortable and, and easy understandable context that though um, let people experience art differently. So there will be a lot of content to be, um, you know, experienced spatially. So I will, I will just leave the word to their, um, to their remarks or their questions. But I mean, I, I find interesting to precise that we are actually like, why, while you build a space, um, there's all this new bubble of culture that hasn't been explored yet because it's a new world, sort of. Apart from, okay, it has long roots because Second Life was created many years ago, but have been um, explored by a niche of people. And um, from the, the artistic point of view, as sort of uh, new, as also Domenico Quaranta was saying before. So, okay, please, I'll still go. Yeah, thank you. Um, this conversation is very interesting and it's something that um, Martha and I have been thinking uh, a lot about in our own work. Um, we've done work with NASA, like space architecture and, and things of that nature. <clears throat> and if you think about, let's say, historically for humanity, you know, we've been kind of surface bound for most of our, you know, prehistory and late history until about the mid 1800s when we had the first kind of balloon that allowed humans to sort of leave the surface of the earth and experience uh, floating in, um, in the air, let's say above the ground and to see for the first time an aerial view, uh, perspective of the ground below, which becomes an abstract pattern of fields and rivers and you know the town. And somehow <clears throat> that experience of the aerial is, um, it's not foreign to us. It feels <laughs> somehow natural, like we're not shocked by it. And in a very short period of time, let's say historically within only a few hundred years, we've become used to it um, and comfortable with it in some way. Like we all fly and it's, it's not such a 
comparable experience. It's actually, you know, pretty nice to fly. Uh, and working with NASA, what we found is that, you know, the astronauts, when they go up into space, uh, there's no gravity, there's no horizon line, there's no ground, there's no surface, there's no way to orient yourself. You're literally floating in a black void. Um, but for them to actually remain functional, they have to establish some kind of rules. So they have this idea of the kind of local vertical, like they all agree that, um, you know, that to fix an orientation that says this is up, this is down, this is, you know, side to side. Otherwise, when you don't have those kind of constraints, it becomes very difficult to function, let's say, or maybe we're just not used to it yet. And maybe over time with these kind of decades, as we spend more time in these environments, we become more accustomed or acclimated to them. And so I guess that's a question that we're kind of uh, wrestling with is, to what degree are we becoming familiar with this virtual space, this kind of <laughs> the void of the digital, um, where we can start releasing some of these uh, comfortable normative elements that we use to sort of <laughs> help us orient ourselves. You know, so we always have a, a horizon line. And, you know, the most of the software that you get, the 3D modeling programs, they just, by default, they have this horizon line and you can't even get rid of it if you want to. Uh, and there's always a sun and there, you know, then you add your ground. So we're sort of, uh, we have these kind of biases or these kind of, um, we're, we expect these kind of things, you know, like to be on the surface of something, which is what we're used to uh, being on the planet Earth. And I guess I wonder, it's maybe more of a question for everybody is, you know, is this going to change over time as we spend more time in these uh, digital voids? Is, is that, are we going to let go of these kind of re requirements or needs for this kind of uh, normative, uh, these normative environmental cues, can we start to release these things? And I guess that's something that the speakers touched on, on on various levels, is like to what degree can we start loosening these um, cues and, and opening up for more experimental um, spaces. So, yeah. I was, I was wondering, maybe there are limitations that are simply related to the programs. For example, <clears throat> we, we as avatars can only uh, walk or jump. But for example, uh, if I reach a wall, the only thing that I can do is to cross it. So it is nice to cross the wall, which you never do in reality. You cannot start walking on the, on the wall. So you cannot rotate of 90 degrees and start walking on the wall. For the moment, there are possibilities that have not been explored. At least is my opinion. So this, it's a limit also for the design of the space. No, that's a great point. Um, I'm Martha from Cloud Architecture Office. In the, uh, it's, uh, I think the you know, topic or the theme is right on to what we've been discussing in the development of the institution. And um, to us, we design the space for exhibition, both in reality and virtual space, um, which is kind of um, begs the question because typologically we're very interested in typology of space uh typology is the space the physical form and the youth program and how it's uh being percept you know kind of uh living in the culture for different uh, variety of you know diverse uh regions and like exhibit space for instance we're dealing with uh, you know started uh, in western culture in churches i understand and into more like a palace of kings or aristocrats, them, them being democratized, became this uh, kind of a white cube for a long time for now. And uh, with the advancement of technology, and now it's becoming a black box in a way, like a black box, uh, it's more controlled and the multimedia. And uh, we've been thinking, so what's, what's appropriate next step uh, in 
current uh, technology and culture. It's a big challenge, but very, very exciting uh, kind of a challenge as well, which uh, which we've been thinking the the topic of tonight, you know, that the balance between real, reality and the abstraction. Uh, so it's been really helpful and inspiring uh, the conversation so far. So um, I'm curious what, from the artist's point of view, um, what they think about the balance between that is uh, like in the process of creation, it's been used, used to be sketches, hand sketches, building models for us, same. And now it's 3D model building and, you know, um, rendering 3D animation, virtual reality presentations. That there's a big gap, um, personalized feel, and that should somehow, you know, translate to the, how the, the artist creator uh, present or exhibit their work in public. So that's um, to me very interesting to hear um, from artist's point of view how they perceive that um, kind of relationship. And also very interesting is that uh, um, listening to the talk that I uh, felt like, you know, we've been thinking, um, so what's new, what's with the new technology, what can be done that's not possible in reality um, to, you know, um, to progress and make it special. But at the same time, I feel like that can be kind of looked in the other way as well that, so what can reality can only offer, you know, what can reality present, you know, experience of reality can present that something virtual space cannot do, you know, it's like a reversal thinking, um, which I just thought about, you know, listening to your discussion. And I think that's um, very, very interesting kind of uh, feedback for us um, to build the physical experience as well. So, yeah, no sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I don't know whether Martin is still with, uh, with us. Uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, I, have a, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, I watched a very long webinar um, in which you were ta chatting with, with, a, with, um, with an art critique, and you were describing where, where your work and uh, the way in which you um, were experiences uh, you were experiencing, especially on special. So um, I'd like to know what are, uh, according to your experience of someone who designed the spaces, what are the limitations and the potential of this kind of software that you use to build the spaces? For example, the fact that we are still working in a very low resolution, yeah. it is a, a limitation or a potential? Just to give you an example of uh, what I'm thinking about. Yeah, and this is the only thing that I want to say before is, um, yes, I like the change of the first perspective that you said, uh, you guys, before. Um, about uh, with the, the walls or the balloon. So I think, it, yeah. I think it's something that um, had to be pushed, push, uh, push up in terms of, um, yeah, to be, to feed uh, this kind of, uh, yeah, situation and um, creation. So yeah, I agree. And about the limitation and potentialities, um, for sure is yeah, the quality, but also is in terms of uh, the movement of the, my body, I mean, it's not the same as well, how I, I move my body in reality. So it's really uh, different, it's limited. Uh, in VR on a desktop or mobile, how you want, is uh, anyway limited. And for sure, um, quite what I said in my, in my lecture is, is that uh, you have to learn, you have to um, study, understand who you are for uh, move for move your yourself in that and it's just like to discover and explore etc and uh, make uh, some kind of communication so um the limitation could be like that potential you can do what you don't do in the reality so you can uh don't don't die for example <laughs> uh you can um just jump and where you want and without consequences you can you can fly you can do yes 
many things that are not possible in the reality. So um, you can really fly in that sense. You can really open your mind and be really creative, open your creativity, actually, and imagine and make uh, all, all the uh, imagine um, the dreams, the dreams uh, concrete. Right in that sense, you can really put down your ideas and give kind of sense to them. So you can really be open in terms of creativity, do what you want in that sense, um, but it's really limited uh, from the other side about the movement. More, I think it's more about the interaction and the movement of uh, my presence in that dimension. Probably that is uh, really the, the, the break between the two, the two sides, positive and negative. I cannot be really myself. I have to be something else, right? Maybe I have to learn. I have to change my character I, in terms of also who I am, the feelings. I have to learn to be something that is uh, adapted for that that world. So some, yeah, exactly something different from from my from yeah who I am from my size. <laughs> So has a response. Yeah, I think that that Luca had some uh, connection problems. But he will, okay, he is back. But wait. Um, but anyway, if I can add something, yeah, I think that actually in general, also uh, in, in general in design and architecture, good design is exploiting the limitation because when you can um, creatively um, develop something that limits you on one side, uh, then you turn the world around. You turn the scenario for, for the audience or for anyone who can experience your space. But Luca, please. Oh, <clears throat> no, it's fine. I mean, uh, I, 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 I had another question to, to uh, Christopher. And I'm referring to obviously to the ex example he, he was talking about um, six minutes to nine. Uh, simply, I was wondering uh, uh, how and, and 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 why he decided to have this um, kind of um, floating um, volumes, floating uh, cubes and, and spheres. That you can only experience uh, in a in a in a um, um, simulating that you are flying, and also I appreciate the fact that uh, when you enter these volumes, you know the experience changes. So you have an approach from the outside and a different experience from the inside of of this uh, of these volumes. So can you just expand a bit on that, please? Yeah. Um, so it's interesting because you're you're referring to um, the the space that yeah that I created personally, um, and it was um, and this is actually something that we've talked about like within the hybrid realities lab um, is that sort of getting like just on a very basic level getting rid of that floor right of of recognizing that you're in um, virtual space. Um, for me, when I was building that, um, that space, I was thinking a lot about like dream spaces, um, and thinking a lot about the logic of say dreams versus reality. Right. Um, which, uh, I was doing research at the time with a person named Salix Finna, um, who is like an, a brilliant dreams researcher. Um, and we were just thinking about the sort of, um, the analogs between, um, dream space and virtual space. Um, and for me, like having a space where you are like sort of experiencing it, not only, you know, in this way that is automatically um, sort of like signaling that you're not in reality, but also that you are experiencing it. Like when you fly into one of the spheres and one of the tubes, um, you um, are experiencing it in a different, like on, an, on another level, right? You're experiencing it. Um, from a different point of view, which I thought was very similar to how um, we experience dreams, right? Where you can kind of be in one place and then another, 
um, and actually um, a lot of this sort of inspiration for um, the sort of that my space came from a video game called LSD Dream Emulator, um, which was from um, uh, it's a Japanese game from the late 90s um, that uh, took um, a, 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 his name is Osamu Sato. He took um, one of his colleagues um, dream journals and turned it into um, these sort of video game spaces that you could um, that you could like uh, navigate through. And it wasn't really like a game, like in the sense that there was a goal, but it was um, it was sort of a virtual experience. It was like a very early sort of virtual experience masquerading as a PlayStation One game. Um, so I was thinking about this sort of uh, in LSD Dream Emulator. Uh, you um, will sort of like go into a wall and you'll be, um, you know, transported into another um, level, right? Like you'll be transported to another plane. Um, so I wanted that experience um, within the virtual space of my uh, my uh, hypnagogic highways um, project, right? Where um, you were able to sort of um, crash through a wall and you're in, a, in another experience entirely and it's all sort of related to a dream logic um, because, you know, something that's kind of come up um, uh, in this conversation too is, you know, we need to, we need to like think about virtual spaces in, in a way that we understand. Um, and I think that dreams and sort of like altered states of consciousness in general might be a good place to start, right, um, with, uh, you know, a, a, an alternative to just recreating physical reality um, within uh within the virtual space so yeah so so it all it all it all kind of goes back to dreams for me i see um since i'm a very old teacher i have a question which is about your background well i'm asking to both of you uh who's your best you you um the artist of, of the of the of the past you like the best so for, for yeah so from the past yeah for both for both of you i mean from christopher and martin the 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 person the art the the artist that I don't know for some reason you you, you believe it's it's influential for your work. Mm. I mean, I like uh, and it's Philippe, not really. Yeah, I, I like uh, Philippe Parinot. I see. I like him because I like uh, the process in his uh, projects. So I like um, how he put all the let's say the um, elements. Uh, that more important the process is more important than the results okay so the representation and so i do uh, a lot of research I, I do a lot of experimentation i like to enter inside of the things uh play with them um and then yes i have to communicate all this stuff so okay there is the end of the work but uh really important as well for me to 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 see uh, let's say uh all have the vision of the what are you doing okay so uh, i like to start from the idea and to arrive with my my um, own uh, skills to the conclusion collaborating with other people for sure but yeah i like this artist because uh he push um a lot of attention in the process and during the exhibition you can you can read this this stuff these things thank you and you christopher who's your favorite <laughs> it um it's so funny as soon as you ask the question it's like every artist i know went out of my head you know um but um, no i would simply uh yeah. just to break some uh walls <laughs> yeah oh, well i i really like um brian geisen um and his dream machines um that sort of um inspired um these uh uh altered states right you look at these these sculptures um and it was meant to sort of uh, simulate um, uh, a sort of like daydream hypnotic um, sort of experience. Um, I've also been very into uh, Genesis Peoridge recently, the performance artist who is the founder of the band Throbbing Gristle and Psychic TV, um, because they, uh, you know, were interested in this sort of like uh, magic through performance art and sort of 
um, ritual uh, and music. Um, and I think for me, I've just been very interested in um, tearing down the walls between art making and sort of like ritual, I guess. Uh, and I think that um, she did it in a really, really interesting way. So um, sort of, yeah. And he also, um, t does anyone know that, uh, you know, the media artist, Tony Conrad, um, who's Flickr films, um, you know, so I'm, I, I guess I should pay homage to him because I'm, I'm doing my PhD in the department that he was the head of, um, his, 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 um, his wife, he's now passed, but his former wife is like our grad director. And, um, I think his sort of Flickr films, um, and his, uh, approach to music is also something very similar, um, to, um, to, to what I want to achieve in my own, um, artwork. And I feel like I'm, like very directly in his lineage uh, because I, there's like a very tangible physical connection. So yeah, I would say, uh, I would say Tony Conrad as well, so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Domenica, do you have any, any I don't know, curiosity, some, something to ask or, to, or simply to, to expand on? Yeah, <laughs> I, I can add maybe maybe something to, to what I said uh, by relying on two uh, words. Uh, one is uh, uh, desktops uh, and the second one uh, is legs. Uh, because uh, uh, desktops uh, are the proof uh, to me uh, of the conserv conservatorism in interfaces, no? Uh, it's uh, 2024 now, uh, the first graphical user interface was launched uh, 40 years ago in 1984 and probably it changed uh, less than uh, any urban environment we are uh, used to. No? Uh, it's basically the, the same place uh, with the trash bin, uh, with the folders uh, and everything. We have a, a very stronger technology now, we can envision the main desktop interface in a completely different way. For example, by uh, sending to the trash bin uh, the metaphor of the office, no? because the computer is not uh, just a working uh, tool anymore, it's also a, a, a gaming tool is a tool to get into uh, metaverses, uh, but we still perceive it uh, as a as an office and legs because uh, it's a proof of the conservatorism of audiences. Uh, when uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg launched the, is the metaverse, uh, one of the biggest complaints uh, uh, was that Avatar said no legs, and one of uh, is. Uh, 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 biggest improvement uh, was adding legs uh, to uh, avatars, no? Of course, uh, <laughs> um, uh, somebody like us may think that avatars don't need the legs in the metaverse, but uh, uh, many people actually uh, want, uh, uh, want them, no? So I think uh, th these things, uh, in a way, um, outline the framework uh, in which uh, uh, when uh, you are building a, a, a metaverse, uh, uh, you, you, you have to uh, work and to uh, consider uh, some kind of conventions. And then, of course, uh, in, in, within that framework, uh, you can be uh, very uh, uh, open-minded and experimental and try to uh, escape no? this... Uh, 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 roots uh, and this uh, uh, conservatorism of both audiences uh, and the uh, interface as a space, no? Well, yes, but uh, yeah, I understand your point. <laughs> we, would, <laughs> we would like to be much more experimental, but in the end, uh, uh, it's really hard to forget our body when even if, even when we are in a virtual world. And uh, I understand people were you know, claiming for their legs in, in the Zuckerberg uh, world because other, you feel really um, um, like a distorted body without your legs. So we should make a jump into a completely different way of experiencing these new spaces. Maybe, maybe, maybe we need time. Uh, maybe we have to to yeah to to reshape completely uh, 
even you know the digital um, <clears throat> desk we we work with uh, in our computers. Um, well, I, I I think it was a very interesting discussion we had, and I I I would like to leave uh, Lucilla concluding this session. I personally thanks everyone for being with us. It was gorgeous. Thank you very much. Yeah, I thank you all of you too. It was really, really interesting to listen to all this flow of uh, discussion, information, re-elaboration. So really, really uh, interesting. And I think actually that um, also our director, Fabio Cavallucci, has something to ask or to say. So leave the word to him. Thank you. Thank you, Lucilla. First of all, uh, thank you to you for having uh, organized these meetings that I think is very, very interesting, was very interesting and I think very important for us. Uh, from a, for a also practical point of view, because gave us a lot of suggestions, a lot of ideas. And I think uh, our architects, uh, Ostap and Mazar, will for sure <laughs> go further with what was said today. And of course, I have to thank all the speakers and Luca to moderate for having moderated them. And I, if possible, you know, as uh, I would like uh, to make the last question to everybody of you. I, I think we are not far. I mean, everybody of us more or less thinks that, that we need a, a certain percent of uh, uh, realism in our metaverse, in, in, the, in the web, but also a certain percent of freedom, of imagination, of abstraction, and so on. I remember that when Marshall McLuhan was writing, uh, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't remember, I read that Marshall McLuhan <laughs> went to his uh, uh, publisher, uh, his book, Understanding Media, uh, the publisher said, no, I cannot publish it, sorry, because, you know, a book should have maximum 15, 20% of new visions if not, it's not understandable for people. Uh, here there are at least 70, 80 percent of new things that are not understandable, so I cannot publish it. Of course, somebody else published it, and we know uh, what happened with understanding media. But I would like to ask you, all of you, now, in your opinion, now, 2024, uh, what is the percent of realism? that we should have in a metaverse, in a new metaverse that, for example, is we are going to build, and what is the percent of uh, surrealism, imagination, and abstraction that also we are going to put in place? <clears throat> Hard question to answer. Mm, indeed. Uh, but... Uh... Um, if, if I may say from my perspective, I would like to be as experiment, experimental as possible, even running the risk of uh, producing something that is hard to be experienced. Um, this is what is, is my personal opinion. Um, I, I, I think we are in an age in which we have uh, many possibilities, so we have to to try them and and fail and and learn from my failures. This is my idea. Any other? Any other? <laughs> Want to add? <laughs> I would. I would say um, I agree with you that we need to be more experimental, maybe 10% reality, you know, 90% uh, experimental. 90% experimental. If, if to put it, to give Thank it out there. So I would, yeah, I would say I'm, if anything, I'm all for uh, experimenting in virtual worlds and I want things to go uh, even further. So, yeah. Thank you, Christopher. 
I, I will say 40% of reality in order to allow the artists 40. that you are inviting uh, to be experimental because uh, uh, if you set uh, an uh, average uh, that is perceived as a normality, uh, of course, uh, experimentation will uh, uh, in some way uh, flourish uh, better. No? Um, uh, I mean, uh, if you go in Rome and look at the maxi, it's outstanding because the normality outside uh, of, uh, of it uh, is completely different, no? And uh, uh, so generating some kind of level of uh, uh, reality can be uh, useful uh, uh, to invite uh, other people to experiment in the same uh, place. And yeah, <laughs> thank you. So for me, it's more uh, surrealistic um, and dreamlike. That's what I want to um, to keep in that dimension um, because there is already a reality that we are living now uh, on it. So the idea is not to uh, copy the reality, but create something else or so really uh, dreamlike and out of the box. So yeah, so it has to be more more yeah expanded. Okay, thank you. So, Fabio, you have our suggestions. So we 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 will see, and we have the architects. So uh, hope uh, can uh, we, we can we can see something interesting as a result. Yes, I hope uh, we can meet again uh, soon and uh, speak uh, also about uh, something that we can show. No could be also interesting to yes. follow the process, yes. not just to to wait for the final finalization. So we want to build something also in an open way in front of the public. And of course, uh, thanks also experts that are uh, like you, that are already helping us. And so maybe in some weeks or in a few months, we can check uh, what is uh, the situation and, uh, and have another meeting like this. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you to all of you, really. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Lucia.